us go to the word of God. Uh, we are going to read the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verse 17 to 18. Daniel, chapter 3, verse 17 to 18, in NIV, it says, If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it, and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. Verse 18, But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your God or worship the image of gold you have set up. Okay, can you go to First Thessalonians chapter 5 from verse 17 to 18. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, today we are going to speak about giving glory to God in all circumstances. We know that as human beings, we come across a difficult situation. We come across a, a things that are good in our lives. Hallelujah. But there is time when you must worship God even though things are not well in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We read in Daniel, it's about uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Hallelujah. We know the situation. They were facing a situation where they were supposed to be thrown in the fire. Hallelujah. It is not an easy thing to be thrown in the fire. I know that you are having a burden in your family. And the, that situation is forcing you to lose focus to God. That situation is taking away you away from the will of God. Hallelujah. But that situation, I want you to focus on what God is saying about your situation. Hallelujah. We must forget about what we are going through. Because the aim of the devil is to, to bring situation in your life just for you to doubt God, to lose your focus on God. Hallelujah. Some of us, we are here because of our situations. We are here because we are sick. We are here because of troubles in our families. Hallelujah. I am not saying you must thank the devil for bringing that challenge in your family. But you must thank God in all circumstances. Praise the Lord. Thanking God in all circumstances does not mean that you must thank God when you have food in the table. Praise the Lord. It does not mean you must thank God when there is bread at home. Thanking God in all situations means that whether there is pain, whether there is difficulties, I worship him because he will never change. Hallelujah. He said in Isaiah 43 verse 2 that I will be with you when you go through waters. Hallelujah. What is happening in our lives? When we start to change our focus because we are facing challenges, there must be a difference between a Christian and a non-Christian. But all of us, we also face challenges. An unbeliever also faces challenges. A Christian also faces challenges. So what do you do as a Christian when you are facing challenges? Are you going to cry and tell the world that Jesus doesn't help? They are waiting for you to come and give them a testimony. Hallelujah. Can't you worship God when you are coming out of your shack? Can't you worship God when there is no food in the table? Remember, God doesn't change. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. That's why I said our situations cannot change him. Praise the Lord. He remained Jehovah Rapha. He remained Jehovah Shalom. But for you is to trust him that he is there. Hallelujah. Challenges will come just because you are a Christian. The devil will bring things to you just to make you to lose focus or to doubt God. Hallelujah. But when you worship God, when you worship God in that challenge... Hallelujah. Do you hear me? When you worship God, when you are in that challenge, something will happen. 
God is busy doing something while you are not seeing. When you worship God, when there is no food at home, God is busy doing something which is more important than food. Always we find ourselves crying for small things. We cry for food. We cry for clothes. But they are not important. God is busy building something behind the scene. Something that is much more important than what, than what we are crying for. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I remember a certain lady. She had a friend. She used to bake her cakes every day. She will go to the neighbor and give her food every day. The neighbor will say thank you. We we'll always say thank you. But because as people, we are used to blessing. We no longer see, even if when God is blessing us, because we are used to his blessings. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Remember, when the third time, when the friend brought the cakes to the friend, she started to say, if you can add a little bit of sugar, your cakes today are so dry. She started to complain. What are we doing today? Are we not complaining to God? Instead of worshipping him. What are we doing as Christians? The world is crumbling there. And we are crumbling here. How are we going to change the world? How are we going to tell the world about God? Why we are also crumbling with them? Hallelujah. We need to change. We need to stand whether the situation is favorable or not. Hallelujah. Remember, we are called by the name of Jesus Christ. We are called Christian because we must go through his steps. He never changed when suffering come. He never cursed God when suffering come. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I don't know who told you that Christianity is a nice journey. I don't know who told you that things are going to be easy. But remember, when Jesus Christ was on the cross, it was not easy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, the devil will touch your children. The children will trouble you. So when they are troubling you, where are you going? Who do you tell? Just say, Lord, I worship you. I thank you for the children that you have given unto me. Because he is the only one that can change the heart of a human being. Hallelujah. But most of the time, we find ourselves complaining, crying by something that we cannot even change. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I remember in Acts chapter 16, you can read it from verse 24 and 25. Upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stock. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing him, hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a such there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison was shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and every, everybody's chain came loose. Hallelujah. Paul and Silas, the Bible says they were tied. Hallelujah. They were tied. It means their hands were tied. Their feet were tied. tied. They were in prison. Hallelujah. But they never say, God, why are we here? They never ask God what is happening because you said you will be with us. They worship God until all the walls of the prison fall down. I know you are facing a challenge, but can you complain and change the problem? Can complain change your situation? No, it cannot change your situation. Why can't you just worship God and see what God, how God will take you out of that situation? You are crying cannot change God. 
But your worship can make God to do something about your situation. Hallelujah. That's why when things are good, give glory to God. When your brother has prosperity or when your brother is succeeding, give glory to God. Hallelujah. We keep on saying, God, give me this. God, give me this. But because we are used to his blessing, we even forget to say, Lord, I thank you. Because we think that it is by mighty that we are achieving what we are achieving. No, it is by God's grace. Whatever you receive, whether it is small or big, give glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't just worship God when everything is well with your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Don't just say, Lord, I thank you because you have bought a car. I see people coming here to testify. People will testify because God healed me. You will testify because you bought a car. You will testify because there's food. You will testify because you have a job. What if there were no job? Were you going to testify about the glory of God? Hallelujah. Remember, he is still God whether you receive or not. Hallelujah. Don't worship him because there's something that he gave unto you. Praise the Lord. Remember what Jesus was going through. He said, Lord, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by. But let your will be done. Hallelujah. Sometimes we cry for things that will make us backslide. When you are rich, we are all praying to get rich. But where are you going after receiving that riches? Where are they? See, the, ch the chairs are empty. Where are they? They come and receive and they go. They are enjoying their riches and forget about God. God, I will see you later. I am busy with my things at town. Remember, I have a business. You are telling God, Lord, I need this. Father, I ask for this. But you forget to come and say, Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Remember, the devil is roaring like a lion. He needs you. Where is your heart? Where is your faith? Is your faith in material things? He will caught you by that material thing. Is your faith on your big house? He will come in that house. He will move your focus from God. Praise the Lord. Let us give glory to God in everything. Remember what happened to Job. God allowed him to go through that situation. There are situations in your life. You don't know if God trusted you by allowing the devil to bring that sickness to you. But when you start to feel a headache, maybe it's almost a year and the headache is not going, you start to curse God. And say, why am I not healed? Are you here to seek healing or are you here to seek God? Let me tell you something. Whether you are healed or not, he remains God. Hallelujah. That's why I say your situation can never change him. He wants you to trust him when you are in that situation. He wants you to say, Lord, you are worthy in that situation. Remember, I said the devil was allowed by God to torment the flesh of Job. Hallelujah. Because God knew that my servant will never lose his focus to me. We love our flesh more than our souls. If I don't eat, things won't be okay with me. We are no longer fasting because we want to take care of our bodies. Remember, the devil will bring pain in your body just to make you doubt God and say, this thing is not working. 
Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. We need to speak the truth because the truth will set us free. If we just come because we need something in the house of God, we don't need Jesus Christ, we are wrong. Let the people outside know our identity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If they can say, this lady is insane when you are worshipping God without shoes, it's fine. If they say, this lady is mad when you are worshipping God in your shack, it's fine. You are not doing it for anyone. You are worshipping your God who knows the future. Remember, a person can be a president today, but tomorrow they will take him out of that chair. So don't determine the future of somebody by what she's going through. Hallelujah. You can be, I can be an evangelist today, but tomorrow I can be something else. So there is nothing that I can stand up and be proud of myself. No, let me worship God in whatever I'm doing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He is still God. My sister, your husband, I know, he is troubling you. But worshiping, worship God. Worship God when he doesn't bring food in the table. You don't know what God is doing to him. He won't tell you when you are praying. He is feeling the fire inside. He won't tell you when you are praying that one day I want to go to church with you. But you will see. Just worship God. Give him the glory. Whether the situation is well or not. He is still God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. On Sunday, we were taught that we must stand. We must have an attitude. An attitude when they gossip about you. Just give him the glory. Just worship him like a mad person. Hallelujah. Most of us, we are backsliding because they talk about me at church. Hey, that church, they talk bad about people. I'm no longer going to that church. Who do you think you are? Are you here for people? Are you here for the pastor? Are you here for the members of the church? Or are you here for Jesus Christ? Hey, whether they give you food on welfare or not, he is still on the throne. He is still Jesus Christ. Don't come here because you want food. Whether they give you food or not, he is still God. Praise the Lord. Remember, he is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Don't allow your situation to take you out of your prayer life. Sometimes when we go through situation, maybe we were praying five times a day, you will start to pray three times a day or not praying at all because there is no money in my bank account. Hallelujah. Do you love God because he is giving you money? I, I'm no longer, I don't, I just feel weak. I cannot pray just because you are facing a challenge. The Bible said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, be joyful, pray continually. He didn't say, the Bible didn't say, pray when there is food in the table. The Bible didn't say, pray when they love you. The Bible didn't say, pray when God gives you something. The Bible says, pray always. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. We are out of our normalities as Christians. We are out of our normalities as Christians. To be a Christian who complain is abnormal. 
Go and ask yourself again, am I a Christian? Am I a true Christian? Something is happening to us. Maybe it is the Illuminati or the Freemason. They will say, give thanks to her because she gave you something. Why can't you give thanks to her for God? Because God gave her to you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are adopting the things of the world. And it's like we are Christians of the world. Remember, we are foreigners in this world. We are foreigners. We are passing by. What you are crying for is nothing. Praise the Lord. It is nothing compared to the glory that we are going to have. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. I believe that he is still God even today. Hallelujah. He is still God even today. Hallelujah. Read uh, Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. Praise the Lord. Three times. He even opened the window for them to see him that he is worshipping his God. Hallelujah. He opened the window. He was not downstairs. He was upstairs. Worshipping him. Giving him the glory. He didn't focus on what they are talking about. Hallelujah. Remember when a lion come here. All of us we can run away. If Daniel was afraid of the lion. He was not going to worship his God. After what they said. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to tell you that the devil is planning something about your life. But is that plan of the darkness going to make you out of your focus to God? Are you going to lose focus because of their plan? Hallelujah. The time is coming when you will be tormented as a Christian. What about that time? Are you going to run away? Are you going to deny God and say, I, no, I'm no longer a Christian because Christians are, get killed. Are you going to deny him? Hallelujah. We must start to be true Christian from today. Hallelujah. Whether we are dying or not, we are going to worship him. Whether they are killing us or not, he is still God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He is still God. We need to change. And go back to our true identity. Hallelujah. People, they must identify you as a praying woman. As a prayerful woman. They must identify you as a thankful woman. A woman who is always happy when things are good or not. Hallelujah. We must change our identity. Remember. He is God. He never changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, I like to tell people that Paul in the Bible, he is my role model. Hallelujah. Remember, he was in the world just like us. We were not born Christians. But I believe that Paul was the, the richest person there, where, where, in Jerusalem. He was having a decent job. Even though it was not his will to be born again. He was forced to be born again. I know you are here. There is a situation that forced you to be born again. Some of us, we were not willing to be Christians. But our situation forced us to be born.
born again Christians. Now that we are born again, we are having all what we wanted. Are we still going back again? Do we still have to go back again? Why did you come here? Hallelujah. Paul worshipped God even in that prison when he was tied. He worshipped God. He never said, he never said to Silas, no, in the world it was better than this. He never said, in the world I was a boss. He take off the position of the world and take in the position in the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, Jesus, whether things are good or things are bad, I am going to worship you until I die. Remember, nobody, no one of the apostles died by sickness. They were all tormented. They were all brutally tormented until they die. But here we are. There is nothing wrong with us. There is nobody coming to threaten us and say, if you are bowing down and worship God, I will kill you. But you said, I, today is Tuesday. I, no, I'm not going to church. Are we waiting for the situations to force us to go to church? Is that the meaning of a Christian? Hallelujah. We need to change our identity. Let us go back to a true definition of a Christian. Praise the Lord. We are going back. We are going to be called Christian and we will be Christian indeed. Hallelujah. We are not going to bow. We are not going to bow. Even if God doesn't give us what we need, we are not going to bow to the Illuminati. We are not going to bow to the Freemasons. Whether they like it or not, we are not going back. They torment our children. They make our children to join things that just to torment your faith. Remember, when they are recruiting your children, they don't have anything to do with your children. They are looking for you, the mother, the father who is a Christian. They are looking for your faith. Tell the devil, go fall over the cliff. I am not going. I am not going. Me and my family, we are not going to bow. I will worship God whether the things are good or not. We will never. We are not going to bow. Whether the situation is favorable or not. Lord, whether you heal me or not, you are still God. I am not saying go and fight your government and say what are you doing. But we will never bow to abortion. We will never bow to abortion. We will never bow to homosexual. Whether the devil wants it or not, we are going to be true Christians. We are going to defy him. And we will worship God. We will worship him. Hallelujah. Let us teach our children to glorify God wherever they are. Sometimes I hear people testifying. Someone said, I was in a taxi and I prayed in my heart. Others, they will say, I will go to the toilet and pray. Are you shameful of God? Why must you go to the toilet to pray? Why can't you pray him publicly? Do we have to hide ourselves when praying? Do we have to wait for people to go out? Then we will pray. Why are we shameful of him? Remember, just know where, where, what is a toilet. 
Are you comparing God to the toilet? Why do you have to go and pray in the toilet? Pray God where you are seated in your office. Pray Him when you are worship, we are working. Hallelujah. He is God in the taxi. He is still God in that train. He is still God in that bus. We need to go back to our true identity. Are we ashamed of our God? We need to go out. We need to tell the government that whether you like it or not, we will pray our God in the street. We will pray our God wherever we want. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray to God whether the government likes it or not. And we will pray wherever we go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We must have an attitude. We must stand bold and speak about God wherever we are. Most of us, we are also receiving advices. You are sick and you know Jesus, but they come to your house and tell you, do you know that Sangoma, he can do this, he can do that for you. And you forget about your God. We are so much afraid of death that when situation come, we fear, we focus on the flesh rather than the spirit. He knows that if he can bring you pain, you will curse God. I am glad I am not a pastor because I know if I were a pastor, you were going to come to me and say, I've got seven months coming here to church, but I'm not yet healed. Are you here only for healing? Worship him in your sickness. Give glory to him in your sickness. He knows that you are sick. Before you saw that sickness, God saw it before you. But now we want to teach God what to do. He created us just to worship him.